I'm interested in learning about what education was like in St. Albert when you were a student. What did your classroom look like? When I started school in grade one, I started at the brick school. And there were only four classrooms in the school, two upstairs and two downstairs. In each classroom, you had a cloakroom, which was behind the main um, blackboard. And in that cloakroom, you also had uh, a little container for water because there was no running water. Then as I progressed through schools in St. Albert, there was the little white school. Then we went to what was the Percy Page Center. Now I think they call it the incubator, or business incubator. Then for uh, high school in grade 12, uh, we went to what is now Father Jan, and that was St. Albert High. And then after I had graduated, even after I finished teaching here, the new high school was built. Approximately how many people were in one classroom? Probably about 25 would be an average, I would say. When I started teaching in the 1960s, um, it was up closer to 30, 35, and we even reached 40 one year. Was there more than one grade level in the same room? Sometimes, not, not usually, but in the old brick school there was because um, there were only four classrooms for 12 grades. So uh, the primary classes were together and then uh, grade 10, 11, and 12 were in one class. What was a typical day like? When we got there in the morning, the first thing was a prayer, followed usually by O Canada, and then we started the actual school. What are some differences between schools today and when you were a teenager? Children are still children, teachers are still teachers. I think perhaps there was a little bit more respect, and I use that word guardingly. I'm sure students today respect their teachers, I know they do, but there was a little more formal respect, I think, perhaps in those days. Um, you never talked about a teacher by a first name, for example. A teacher wasn't your best friend. Uh, your teacher was someone who wore a suit and tie, or for the women, a suit, no pantsuits, had to be a skirt. <laughs> and uh, there was just a very, uh, I'd say more formal than today. Welcome, Senator Shalafu. Well, thank you very, very much, Jesse. What we're going to be talking about today is Canadian history. The Canadian history, we have such an exciting history in Canada, and we're the best kept secret in the country. So hopefully today, you're going to get a peek at what our people have done all throughout the years in developing and negotiating all of the things that were happening, the good things that are happening here in Canada. You were born in 1929. Could you tell us about your family? My maiden name is Villeneuve. My great-great-grandfather was born here in this area in 1803. My great-grandfather was born here in St. Albert. My grandfather was born here, and my dad was born here. And my dad was born here in 1892 in St. Albert. My grandmother, Julia Boucher, she was born in Lac St. Anne in 1840. So we have been around as Métis and Cree, we have been here in this country for generations and generations because we came with the fur trade. Before nominated as Senate, you were called an activist. Could you tell us about some of your work? When I was married and I had my children and then I left because of a violent domestic situation and uh, I worked and I worked all the, all the time and raised my children. That was what part of it. But as an activist, my, my father was also a member of the Métis Association. My grandfather was a vice president here in St. Albert in 1895, and he was the vice president of the Half-Breed de Norquist uh, Association here in 1895. So that we've had, we're politicians throughout the generations, really, in fighting for the rights and the opportunities for the Métis and the Cree and the people that came here. And so this is what I've been doing all my life. I'm an organizer. I was organizing up in the northern part of Alberta and in, in the territories and right across in through to BC. We were, I was organizing the people to, uh, in local government and also in community activism so that we have a voice. It's very important that we as Canadians have a voice. How did you know Jean Chrétien? And what was it like for him to ask you to become a senator? I was not a liberal as such, you know, I wasn't part of the Liberal Party or anything, 
But I really always liked Jean Chrétien because he was a, uh, he was a community person and he always fought for the people. And so when he uh, asked me, I asked him, I said, why me? I had never been part of the political scene or anything like that. And he said to me, he said, Madame, when I read your story, I know that you're needed in the Senate. So I was really, really proud. So then he asked me in French, you know, can I speak French? And I was so excited, I answered him in Cree. <laughs> so, but he was a, a marvelous man, marvelous, marvelous man. I know that it was, you know, very controversial, but he was, uh, I watched him when I was in the Senate and I met with him every week and, and things. And he was always talking on issues. It wasn't personalities, it was issues and the concerns of, of, the, of the nation. Very impressed with Jean Chrétien. As a teacher and a principal, did you ever teach any Aboriginal or Métis students? Not in Morinville, because I have been principal there. But when I was in Pincher Creek, I remember I had two students. We had students from the reserve, which uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it was a few miles uh, away from Pincher Creek. And I had two big guys in grade, grade 11 or 12. And they, I, I was teaching typewriting. And you can imagine those two guys, they were not very preoccupied in knowing how to typewrite very well. So I always scolded them because they looked at their fingers. They weren't supposed to look. So I remember it. one was Jim and the other one, I can't remember the name, but I found out afterwards that he had committed suicide. But they were great guys. They were very good uh, pupils. And so we had so many of them also in the other grades. St. Albert is celebrating its 150th anniversary. It was originally founded by Father Lacombe and Métis families. Is there anything you'd like to add? St. Albert was founded also by, by French Canadian families because it was uh, around 1891 or that the, uh, the pioneers came from Quebec to establish themselves to take homesteads in Morinville, especially around the St. Albert. And so they, they, they were very, in St. Albert, the French Canadian families had been established there, uh, here, as well as the Metis family. And we have to think of all those pioneers because 150 is a, a big, is a, a very important anniversary. But we have to think of the pioneers, the history behind all that anniversary or celebration. We owe them a very, very, very much. And of course, we have to thank God for all the blessings that came on the population of St. Albert. Sir Trottier, c'était un plaisir de vous rencontrer. Thank you very much for coming. We had a pleasure meeting you. Ça m'a fait plaisir. Merci beaucoup. Je suis très honoré d'avoir été invité. I feel honored that I've been invited here to St. Albert, especially on this occasion of, of the 150th anniversary especially as a historian, I just love it. Quelles sont vos expériences lors de la Deuxième Guerre mondiale? Terminant l'école, c'était l'armée. Je me suis enrôlé. Et euh, je me souviens quand j'ai signé mes papiers d'enrôlement, j'avais dit « nationalité canadien-français » et puis ils m'ont dit « non, ton, ta nationalité est un sujet britannique ». Alors j'ai été obligé d'effacer ça. Et puis de, comme on mentionnait comme père, quand, mon père était canadien-français et ma mère était franco-américaine. Avez-vous des amis qui ont participé à la Deuxième Guerre mondiale? Oh, j'ai beaucoup d'amis, mais j'ai perdu beaucoup d'amis à, à la guerre. Dans votre temps à Saint-Albert, avez-vous connu des gens qui ont joué un rôle important dans la communauté? 
Oh, j'ai connu les politiciens. Le, le, un des premiers politiciens que j'ai connu, c'était un, un petit homme de saint pieds. Il était libéral. Je me souviens qu'il avait voté, qu'il ne voulait pas que les, les femmes aient le droit de vote. <rire> Ensuite, ça a été suivi par d'autres francophones. Avez-vous établi une famille à, à Saint-Albert? Oh, oui, j'ai établi une famille. J'ai établi une famille de 16 enfants. Vous restez à Saint-Albert par choix ou par circonstance? Je suis venu à Saint-Albert pour construire une maison. J'étais vétéran, alors j'avais droit à un hectare de terrain. J'ai acheté un hectare de terrain dans, en, dans le district Grandet. Aujourd'hui, euh, j'ai vendu ça à la ville de Saint-Albert, puis c'était un parc écologique au, au nord du l'étang Grandet sur une Grandin Road. Saint-Albert célèbre son 150e anniversaire. Cela a été établi par des Métis et des francophones. Avez-vous un message à dire à tous les jeunes francophones de Saint-Albert? Oui, wow, vous êtes bien chanceux. Vous avez des écoles francophones. Mes enfants n'ont pas eu l'occasion d'aller dans des écoles francophones. Ils avaient seulement le français à la haute école, le français 10, 20, 30. C'était... Une étude de la grammaire seulement. On n'apprenait pas à parler. C'était une langue morte. Alors, vous êtes très chanceux. Le plus jeune de ma, le septième de ma famille a eu la chance d'aller apprendre le français dans les écoles d'immersion. Il a commencé à aller à l'école Grandin Edmonton. Le district scolaire de Saint-Albert leur donnait un taxi pour les voyager de Saint-Albert à l'école Grandin. Rendu au secondaire, il est allé à l'école GH Picard, aujourd'hui l'école Maurice Vallet la vallée Alors il voyageait d'être Saint-Albert à l'école GH Picard. Monsieur Cournoyer, ce fut un plaisir de vous rencontrer. Merci d'avoir accepté pour venir à l'école Alexandre Taché. Merci. <rire>